As you probably know, Range Rovers are some of the most off-road worthy vehicles in the world. And we here in Colorado, after getting three feet of snow, wanted to know which Range Rover is the most off-road worthy. I'm driving the brand new 2012 Range Rover Sport. And Nathan, well, he's driving the brand new... I'm in the Evoke, baby. <laughs> so, which one of these two cars is better in the snow? Oh, mine is, come on. <laughs> We're gonna go up to Gold Hill, Colorado to find out right now. Stick with us. <laughs> you are crazy. <laughs> it's the grand. Ladies and gentlemen, in this corner, we have the reigning champion, the 2012 Range Rover Sport, weighing in well a lot. With 385 horsepower, this has years of dedicated and proven pedigree to make this the snowbound champ. Nathan, what do you got? This is the young contender. It is the all new Range Rover Evoque. And this baby is packing 240 horsepower in a four cylinder turbocharged engine. Now both tires are rated mud and snow, but if you look at the tread pattern, <laughs> this one has much more aggressive snow tires. This is more for the street. They're both 19 inches. So let's see which one is better when the snow gets deep. I'm okay. <laughs> it's apparently not a snow rover, Nathan. Hold on. Maybe a Range Rover, but it's not a snow rover. Let me know when you want to push. <laughs> Hold on. Come on, baby. Oh, come on. Be a good girl to daddy. There you go. Now, straight back. Oh, yeah. Ah, <laughs> I'm invincible. I don't want to do that again. Let me show you how you do it in a proper Range Rover. <laughs> One with adjustable air suspension that can raise itself up yeah, with dude. proper mutton snow tires. Uh, yeah, I, I, I'm sure you're not gonna have as much of a problem as I did, but you know what, it did do it. Yeah, come on, dude. It you did were... do it, it got out, you know? And despite my incompetent driving, it did it. You were like a tick's breath away from having me push you. Oh, no, 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 it would have been fine. I would have hired somebody else just so I could save the face. Nathan, is that a few inches of snow where you got stuck? That's actually pretty damn deep. That's like a foot or two. Or three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah? I'll show you deep, dude. Watch. Right. I will not even back up. I will just... I won't even use reverse. I will... Look at this. Look at this. Oh, deep snow. Oh, 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 no. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh, now I'm worried. I think I'd go forward and back if I were you. Now back real fast. Straight back. <laughs> so, even though $20,000 more and you got stuck too. I did get stuck, but it wasn't quite as uh, stuck as you were. But I did get stuck, even with mud and snow tires. It just shows you when you got like 5,000 pounds worth of car, you just gotta, you just gotta, you know, know your limits. Woo! This is as far as I got, and it's up to my knees, and I'm over 6'1". That's not bad for a car. I don't know very many vehicles that can actually get out of this much snow. I know one car that can get farther, and that would be the Range Rover Sport. I got this far, I'm also up to my knees, and I'm probably two feet farther in the Nathan. Yeah, two feet further for about $20,000 more. Round one, Range Rover Sport. Round two, gas mileage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah. You know, when, when you're driving in the snow, you tend to get worse gas mileage. Yes, you but do. here's the interesting really part. Really bad, really bad. Really bad. Oh, bad, bad gas mileage. These rovers are known to be pigs, especially the sport. It's just no Nathan. 16 for one. 16.1. <laughs> I'm getting 20.3. I think I got that one. Round two, Range Rover Evoke. Ladies and gentlemen, this 
actually that, is Lick Skillet Road, one of the steepest roads in America. And there is no better test of stability, traction, and snow worthiness of a car than seeing how fast it'll make it up this road. But keep this in mind, they have gotten three feet of snow up here in the last few days, so this is now a one-way road. So we are gonna do a timed run to see if the Range Rover Sport or the Evoke is faster, but we're gonna take it somewhat easy because we don't wanna get, well, into an accident. But let's see how fast these two cars can make it up like Skillet Road. And I'm gonna go about as fast as I dare to because it's not only slick, but it's pretty much a one-way road. So are we ready? Tell me when to go. Ready? Cut me off. Three, two, one, go. Okay. Oh yeah, not a lot of wheel spin there. That's the Range Rover Sport sophisticated all-wheel drive system putting power down where it needs to go. It's holding gears because I have it in sport mode. Once again, I don't want to go too crazy fast. Oh, listen to the sound of that Jaguar sourced engine. 385 horsepower pushing this beast of a car up this crazy steep and slick road. Oh, you gotta love the sound of that. 6,000 RPM finally shifts up. I'm going as fast as I dare. a very steep turn. This is the one that separates the men from the boys. Look at that, someone's gone off the road here, no doubt. Oh yeah, oh yeah, now we're going up, I'd say at least 15%. That is floored, that is floored. Come on car, traction control kicking in. I think we're coming to the end. Here we go. Here we go. And I've got the stopwatch, we got the barrels coming up. All right, that was right. Here. Stop. All right, what's the damage? 153.9. 153.9. Now, this is the sporty version of the Range Rover. Let's see how that sexy new Evoke does. You ready for your turn, Nathan? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, good. And so, are we ready to go? Let's go, Nathan. Okay. Keep it on the road, please. Certainly. Three, two, one, go. There he goes. So, how does it feel? How does the traction on this car? You know, it's an interesting thing because a lot of people had an issue with Rover building a vehicle like this because essentially it is a car. The all-wheel drive system that they have in here is surprisingly good. The ride is fantastic on the streets. Here, uh, I gotta give it up to Roman's vehicle. First of all, you can see around corners better because you're sitting higher. This is, oh boy. And now we're bogging down because the uh, traction control system in this is really touchy. Come on. There we go. It's a six speed automatic transmission. It's got paddle shifters on it, eh. but it does hunt for gears. It's, it, it, the brain is constantly thinking. Here, here's my reasoning with that. The British say absolutely not, you're fat American, you cannot choose your own gears, we'll do it for you. And we're here. Stop. All right, there you go, dude. Can you read that? It's 206. So you went about, oh gosh, well, 15 seconds slower. You know, uh, considering that part where I bogged down, that's actually not too bad. You know, we set out to show that two Rovers can be really different and at the same time they are absolutely fantastic when it comes to driving in this white crap. I gotta tell you, I love mine, I do, but this thing's a tank. <laughs> I tried to do a burnout, but it's just not my thing. You can't do burnouts, you're a sophisticate, you don't do burnouts. All right, I think we can both agree that this beast is more expensive and probably more off-road and snowworthy. Absolutely, it is, but you know what? That Evoke really did kick ass. They're both great. and. I suppose the lesson is, if you're gonna go in the snow, get dedicated snow tires, not quote unquote mud and snow tires that are all season because that's what it's really all about. Yeah, yeah, if you're really serious about going in the white stuff, get snow tires. As always, this is Roman and, and Nathan. See you guys next time on the Fast Lane Car. Let's go! Fast, fast, you're going without me. She was supposed to let me in. Howdy, folks. Yes, I fit. It's not a lot of space. Actually, if you look at it, the way the back tapers, you lose a lot of the utility that you can normally get from an SUV. So if you're looking for space, 
probably not for you. Here's something interesting though. The wheelbase is exactly the same with this one as it is with the three door. So you have a coupe version with just two doors and then four doors. Can you imagine the size of those doors? Come here, I wanna show you one more thing. These are the wheels that receive power. <laughs> That's right. Basically, this is a front wheel drive vehicle with a rear end that can lock in when necessary. It's an interesting system and it works really well. Unfortunately, it's also a $50,000 Rover with a four cylinder engine. That's probably the major detractor because some people just don't want to spend that type of money on this type of car.